We just got that latest read on the US economy. We had that durable goods uh, data coming in, uh, less bad than had been expected, but still down, and the prior month revised down. We also saw retail sales yesterday unexpectedly fall. How confident are you uh, in the consumer this year, and by extension, uh, the US economy through 2019? Well, I, I certainly think we're long in the tooth in this, in this uh, uh, you know, recovery from the bottom in 2008 or 2009. And so, yeah, I think you always have to be a little more concerned when the recovery is this, you know, uh, has been going this long. Listen, consumers are, it is a cyclical time, right? And I, I think that consumers are smart. I think that they have to realize that their earnings power has to go a lot further uh, in this economy. Um, and so they're being smarter about what they're doing with their, with their money. Um, certainly, I, I think you can make the case that, uh, that people need to be a little bit more aware of their personal finances. And so uh, do I think long term we're going to have a chain, massive change in spending patterns? You know, probably not. But in the short term, could we have a blip or two around uh, consumers sort of pulling in their horns a little bit? Maybe. maybe. Now, now, this conference uh, is about the future of the consumer. What sort of opportunity uh, does that provide for Cowan? Well, so I, I think this is actually what we're here to talk about today, which is, uh, you know, notwithstanding what's happening in the economy at the moment, there's some massive changes happening in the consumer industry. There's mm -hmm. changes around consumer engagement. There's, there's, there's a new emerging brands that are really uh, helping consumers to be better at what they do by uh, immersing them in experiences. I, I certainly think that the digitally native communities are, are matching buyers and sellers in ways we haven't seen before. Um, the emergence of health and wellness as a category, finally, in its own. And, and I just think uh, that's changing supply chains and it's changing a lot of different things about how people deliver products and services to the consumer uh, who has a much smarter consumer uh, than and maybe ever before. And so, you know, what we're here to talk about today is that disruption. And uh, there's going to be winners and losers uh, in, in that game. And Do you see particular winners and particular losers? Well, I, you know, that's the job of our research team, right, is to pick the winners and losers. I, I actually think, you know, and we've talked a lot about this, right, uh, most Americans uh, invest in the markets today through passive product, but but they're missing opportunities to make significant returns by picking winners and losers. And there are a number of us in this industry, particularly at Cowan, who do that for a living really well. And today is about being able to identify those trends and owning the center of the debate around who are likely to be winners and losers and helping our professional investors to really uh, make better investments, more informed investments around the uh, trends in consumer. You talked a little bit about disruption there. And one of the big disruptors we've heard a lot about is Uber. We talk about a lot of the uberfication um, of consumer businesses. That has changed the way a lot of consumers behave, but it's also changed the jobs market. Do you see uh, a big change coming uh, for the American workforce? Well, so it's evolving, right? We actually have uh, what I like about this group of uh, consumer companies that's emerging in this era is that it's creating space and time. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's interesting is humans are amazing, right? Before email, what did we actually do, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, we, we had to take time to write letters and go to the post office and do a bunch of other things. And then email comes along and we're much more efficient at responding. And then Snap comes along or some, you know, short message system comes along and we're even more efficient and we create space for ourselves to to do other things. And so, uh, you know, when I look at Uberfication or I look at the sharing economy, uh, it's all geared towards creating more space and time for consumers to enjoy themselves or, or to work or to do other things. So I, I feel like this efficiency element associated with shopping and, and the consumer experience is actually helping consumers in ways that they can't even imagine. Uh, you know, we could never imagine having a ride sharing app, you know, five, seven years ago. And now, what do we do without it? And so it, it's creating this opportunity for for us to do many other things with our dollars, many other things with our time, and, and that's part of sort of the learning that's going to go on here today. Let's talk a little bit about Cowan's business. As the investment banking results at Cowan rose last year, what's driving uh, deal flow for you, and is the consumer a part of that? Oh, it is, for sure. I mean, I, so at Cowan, we're very much focused on health and wellness. We do a lot in healthcare and the consumer experience and technology and tech-enabled. Uh, we're all about the emerging uh, economy and really focusing on companies we think can be uh, significant disruptors, uh, certainly in, the, in both the private market and the public market. And so for us, uh, this has been a great time. There's a whole host of companies that are doing things uh, across that spectrum that are doing... specific ones you want to tell us about? Well, I can't talk about specific companies uh, because that's, that's 
not my purview, but but I certainly as we look at at the areas we've chosen to, to engage in around healthcare and consumer and tech and payments and all these amazing uh, places where and, and, and you know where uh, the U.S. consumer and the economy is going, that that's where we want to be, and, and that's really, really where we focus our energies. And, and it's reflected certainly in our numbers uh, as we've leaned in and, and put resources towards really uh, exposing ourselves to, to that growth. Um, one deal that Cowan has reported uh, to be working on is helping the Chinese owner of the dating app Grinder sell itself. This is after it was reported uh, that the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S., CFIUS, is concerned about the data that it holds. Are you concerned about growing consumer protectionism? Uh, how is that going to impact uh, especially more tech-enabled consumer businesses going yeah, forward? I, so I definitely think that consumer protection is at the forefront of, 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 of everybody's mind. The government's mind, um, certainly uh, yesterday you saw Mark Zuckerberg talk about regulate me, right? I, I need some guidance on what's going to be acceptable. Um, and I think consumers are wise to it. You know, maybe three or four years ago they were less concerned about it, and now everybody's concerned about it, given uh, privacy breaches and the use of your own personal data. This is going to be an area that is extremely important to navigate for companies and for consumers over the next few years. Uh, the government is absolutely concerned about it, no question about it. Uh, I think the government is concerned about protectionism anyway. I think anything related to China at this moment is sort of off limits until uh, the geopolitical situation uh, figures itself out between these two countries. And, and so, you know, I think what you're seeing from CFIUS is, is a natural extension of that.